and we'd like to show you um, this what's happened uh, with, with Germanic tribes at the beginning of migration period using an example of a small, uh, small uh, cemetery from uh, southwestern Poland. Uh, at first, I will show you some, uh, some photos of graves, some in, uh, and give you some information about finds, and, Dal and then Dalia will tell you about analysis, analysis of bones. So, uh, it's only 10 graves, uh, so not much. Uh, but it's very important because it's, uh, this is the, the third cemetery, cemetery from that period which was uh, mm, discovered in this, in this region. Um, unfortunately, the first, first cementaries were discovered before World War II and bones were destroyed during the, during the war, so there was no possibility to analyze bones. Now, now we have, finally we have possibility to, to, to make such, such analysis. Ten graves. Um, it was discovered during the construction of a house. It's, uh, it's uh, here, here. So unfortunately, a few graves were destroyed by, by construction workers. And then we we'll make a German, geomagnetical survey, and there is no more graves. So it's the whole cemetery. Here you can see some anomalies, but it's uh, um, there was a farm from 19th century, so it's definitely is not connected with, with this cemetery. So, first grave. Um, first grave. Um, partly destroyed by construction workers, just with a, just with a skull. And this is very typical, uh, fragmented body. This is very typical for migration period. Uh, and uh, at the beginning it shows connection with, with other regions, because such custom came from territory of, of Ukraine. This is clearly connected with Chernyakhov's culture, these people, um, such a bullyarite and uh, these this finds, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, are clearly connected with so-called post Chernyakhov horizon. So it means with people who escaped from nowadays Ukraine because they were afraid of Hunic impact. Um, uh, another one, uh, as you can see, this very, I think I will take again this um, They were trying to reopen this grave and here. And this is also very, very, very characteristic for rituals you known from, from, from Ukraine and generally from steppes. Um, here, you can see, here, here you can see skeleton and finds from, uh, finds from, this, uh, from this grave. Um, it doesn't look interesting, but, uh, but in fact it is. It's a nail. Uh, probably it was used to, um, to make a, a wooden coffin and it's also hard characteristic. This one is also interesting. It's, it's a part, uh, uh, part of chainmail, and um, it is um, it is typical for grave in eastern eastern Barbaricum. Nobody knows why in in female graves. Um, another grave also destroyed. Another one. Another one. Um, and here you can see. Um, this is an interesting find, which was located, located here, but this is also typical for, typical for Chernyakhov's culture. Um, another one. Yeah. Another. And this one is also, also interesting. Here you can see the body was fragmented, but we don't know how it happened. Probably uh, it was decomposed, body was decomposed, and then they put bone inside the grave. Uh, another, and also this one is very interesting. Um, under under such a stella, there was a layer of ashes, and under these ashes, we discovered um, body chopped into pieces. And also very very characteristic ritual for uh, Cherniakov's culture, known from nowadays Ukraine and partly also from southern southwestern Russia. So. Um, uh, according to Roman, histor Roman historians, um, people, these people were simply very afraid of Huns. They, they've, they've started to escape. People from steppes, they started to escape. They were escaping along Danube River, uh, and most probably uh, this is the way how they, how they uh, appeared in Poland. Uh, but some of them escaped straight to Roman Empire, and it, it was the beginning of migration period. Uh, we don't know exactly the nature of this process, 
uh, because uh, as Dalia will tell you in a minute, most probably these people were local mostly, yeah. so there were no, uh, there were they not escape, but they but these people who who escape they change a cult, cult, local culture. Um, and here you can see a map which shows. Uh, what happened with, uh, with uh, social structure, with economy, with settlement. Uh, it was the whole territory of Barbarico were simply abandoned. <coughs> Firstly, this region, Czarniachow's culture, then here in Poland, Czechos culture, then Germanic cultures from uh, Danubian region. Uh, so, what was the economy of this time? Uh, it was a simple collapse. These people wanted to survive, and this is the main goal: to survive, to stay, to stay alive. And now, uh, Dalia will tell us about physical condition of these people. Uh, the cemetery of Kniez, as Tomek said, is uh, very unique because in the whole Poland we may have maybe five or six cemeteries that are clearly associated with the migration period. And what is really happening during the migration period in a, uh, Central Europe is a very good question. Because we have some sources from Roman um, writers. We know the political events happening in Roman Empire. But what the barbarians are doing in that time, this is pretty, pretty big, big stuff. And in this project, me and Tomek, we would like to investigate one single thing. Namely, by the end of... Uh, uh, by the end of the 4th uh, century AD and the beginning of 5th century, uh, this territory is inhabited mainly by Germanic tribes. Okay? This is a few centuries before the arrival of the Slavic people that will come as a result of this big turnover. In this time period, we have a huge migration of Gothic people moving from Scandinavia towards the Ukraine and later on towards the Balkans. And this is pretty well known fact, we, 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 we've heard about that before. This big thing, this big direct stain, supposedly represents nomadic people that are inhabiting or are staying in some kind of relationship with the local people. And we would like to see what is the relationship between local Germanic populations Germanic tribes inhabiting Iron Age Silesia and the proximity of Hunic people. Because the relationship between Huns and Roman people, Roman Empire, was pretty well known. It was a great, this is war by the end, okay? It was absolute war from the beginning until the, very, uh, and, until the uh, end of the Roman Empire. But could it be a symbiosis between Roman, uh, Germanic people and Hunic people? Could it be possible that actually Romanitas was not as attractive? For, for Germans, that they were, they were in, a, in a case of something, they were willing to actually join the Hunic people in a successful raid for Rome because the gold was flowing and perhaps something was going on. The problem is that in, in Poland, Germany, we don't have any cemeteries. So everything what we know is our speculation. We have some pottery studies, we have a lot of iron uh, items, but the skeletons are few in between. So Tinez is a good, you know, testing ground for, uh, for. Uh, having a look at what kind of people we are really looking at. Twelve skeletons, I radiocarbon dated in all of them, and it turns out that they are, the funny thing about this cemetery is that there are no children, there are only adults. Moreover, there are two clearly, uh, we can clearly see two uh, events of the position. So basically six people have been buried by the end of the fourth century, according to, the, according to C14, and 30 or 40 years later, Another six people has been added, and that's it. No one is adding any more skeletons. So this is some kind of special place, especially that when you look at the skeletons, there are only two females, 10 males and, and, uh, and two females. One of these females, Tomek was showing you, was wearing a chain mail. So typical armory style thing. And the second female skeleton was heavily, I mean, she must have been really sick because there were some bone deformities of various kinds, so it was pretty interesting. And I took samples from the teeth of all these people, trying to see the dietary pattern. I mean, uh, what they eat. Let's start with that. What I have found is a moderately unattractive type of diet, based primarily on the terrestrial resources, a lot of porridge. Not so, you know, we, we, in isotopic studies, we say that this profile of the diet is fairly terrestrial, which means porridge, a little bit of vegetables, occasionally meat products or high protein products. But it's, it's telling me absolutely nothing. So 
I was, I was trying to put that in the global context of the ecology. I measured also animals that we have from Silesia to see what is the trophic level. And it, it, it looks fairly, I mean, there are no starvation cases in any, in, in any way. The situation starts to look much more interesting when I mapped more Iron Age populations from the region because, well, the context matters. So in the yellow dots, you can see the diet of the, the, of the Stinitz, the um, migration period people. And in the blue, uh, the closest cluster is the blue dots, and they are coming from Iron Age Czechia, Kutna Hora. So we can see that the profile of the diet of these guys are fairly typical to the Iron Age populations from, from Czechia. When we compare that to Switzerland, oh, we can see the black dots, this is the, this, the, there is a difference, right? And in the green dots, we see on top Iron Age Sweden, fairly from the same, uh, fairly from the same uh, time. So, so there are three different uh, dietary options, and that middle age option, that, they are falling within a, um, a certain regular pattern. And now, Tomek had an idea that basically maybe some of these people are cultural hybrids, meaning how do, I mean, um, they might be locally born people, but since we are in the times when the Hunic people are hanging around, how about checking the possibility if we, if, if we see elevated mobility? And by that, I mean hypermobility, because Hunic people are considered to be hypermobile. They can really traverse the whole Europe very fast. So uh, for, the, for the purpose of this study, I collected a lot of samples from Silesia, soil samples, I created a little isoscape to catch the people on a, a baseline map of Aria. This is the geology. Geology of Silesia is, uh, is actually very um, easy to, to work with. We have only two major uh, geological units and, and we know exactly where our people are sitting in. So. So this is how the simplified isoscape, my, my net, look like. I intend to catch the nomads. First, I have to build the net. This is the net. I mapped a large area around Wroclaw, something around 60 kilometers around the site of Tyniec. I'm taking soil samples, water samples from Oder River. So I know that my Oder River level is here. And these are different settlement zones around, around, uh, around Wroclaw. And are clearly, you can clearly see what kind of territory, territory is representative for my study. I'm, I'm catching this area, I'm catching this area. This is my point where I have dead people to measure. So I selected several different territories within. Um, we, are, we are more or less, this is approximately 100 uh, square kilometers, so this small, small territory. And this is what happens. Uh, when you start to do laser ablation strontium measurements on the people. I selected two individuals because we know that we have two uh, chronological horizons. Six people have been buried in one phase, and then there's a second group buried 40 years later. I'm taking one single representative of one group and the second group, and I, I will see which one is where from. And the, the red line, individual number five, this is the, the first group, individual number eight, is the second group, and what we see, and this is my whole net. I mapped this whole area hoping to see a big mobility things, possibly Hunic people hanging around, jumping. I'm, I'm measuring the, the strontium from uh, pretty much in the same way I did Chronovsky female, so I'm measuring each tube basically with the resolution of approximately three, four months. So I'm taking the whole dentition trying to find them. And what I found is they are staying local. And they are probably, I, they, are, they are born locally and they are staying fairly within the range of other river. And the closest community associated with, with, uh, with these values is the community actually selected in the first place. So the samples, soil samples from the Schlenja territory area around the cemetery are actually matching the, the values of the, of the skeleton pretty well. So, we, uh, I was very un unhappy to tell Tomek that we don't have Hunic people. We have very angry Germanic people living in the graves. But there, are still, I mean, uh, there might be some kind of cultural influence with Hunic people, but it's of different nature. It's not about diet, and definitely it's not about moving around like crazy, okay? So, 
This is.